Alright, so the buffer, we're going to look at buffer into the depth in this, this lecture. Um, uh, so far you have learned the basic, general. you have general idea, you did a project already uh, using buffers. But in this lecture we're going to look at uh, more details about buffer objects, right? Uh, let me get the approach why we, uh, we, are, we are interested in this case. Um, well, especially when you're using a complex structure, so obviously you have to have the support of the GPU and a better way to uh, pass the data in between a CPU and GPU. So only way that you can do that is uh, generating buffers. Okay, so uh, so th because of that, we have to have a clear idea how we handling the data. Right, so you have to visualize how you're handling the data. That is very important uh, from now on, especially if you're writing things to the shared coding or anything like that. You should have a good idea. Okay. Right. Um, so so far, uh, well, so let me start uh, with something that you already know, which is we know the images has different formats, right? So we have JPGs, we have uh, PNGs, right? Uh, PNGs, and then we have BMPs, right? Okay. So as I addressed before, there's so many others, right? Okay. And most common ones. Uh, uh, if you want to load this into the system we really don't know the format so because of that we use what we use soil right we use soil uh, as a big bridge program so this will go and capture by a memory chunk that we're going to use right so we will talk about this a little as well uh, what is this memory means okay and uh, then we wrap that to our model right so that is what we call texture coordinates we used so we can have a nice picture at the end right so we did this already in the labs and everything so we use soil and all that okay so so that is 2d right in 2d models you can use this so when it comes to 3d right we should have something similar right so uh, in this case in 3d obviously you have to have a soil because it has a texture other than texture now uh, this is only the texture for the 2d right it's uh, you will use a one quad and then apply this right so in this case it is not a quad it's a bunch of triangles with the images now you're going to use okay so then that will make a model right so uh, what are the model uh, formats we have we have a DEA which is called Collada right we have Collada model and uh, we may have FBX so FBX is AutoCAD uh, so this is what AutoCAD use right AutoCAD uh, they're using that uh, format as I remember and then there are more like 3DS model 3DS model is 3D Max right so that is something uh, 3D Max uses and uh, blender uh, i think it's blend as i remember so it is a blender the open source maya has its own formats and then uh, uh, one more uh, let me call it object it's a wave front the static 3d models right so what we learned so far uh, we use object uh, the wave front objects so wavefront objects can have vertices in their normals, right? Texture coordinates, colors. So we have these these arrays, right? Okay. So these arrays we used, and uh, of course we have another one which is called faces. So we uh, combine all these by using this, and then uh, we put this into the buffer PPO, and then from VBO to GPU. So you can have a better control on the data or we can do it a fast memory kind of thing so uh, see the objective is handling these right uh, we don't know these formats okay so if you get colada it is xml so you have to have a parser in order to uh, handle this uh, and then extract the data into this format uh, if you're using FBX, they have their own library that you can use, right? Uh, so they don't have, uh, I don't think they have public uh, 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 
manual that you can go and read uh, never seen that and uh, these two might have uh, blender obviously have <coughs> their own format described so how do i get these uh, into our own format and uh, draw draw a model out of it so that is one question um, one thing we are going to look at in in the near future so what we using for this is called asip right ASIP. so this is the library we're going to use uh, because it has its ability to read this so this is a bridge program okay so this is a bridge program if you want you can go and look at it and uh, get ready right so we're going to i'm going to introduce that in the near future probably your next project will be handling this and then uh, we will we will done with four projects and then the last one will be webgl uh, that is the uh, so we will be good to go so yeah we have only uh, three weeks right so uh, uh, i try my best uh, to wrap up the asymp uh, lab uh, on this friday and give you an assignment to do uh, so in that case uh, we will have enough time for the webgl as well okay all right and uh, uh, yeah actually we have four weeks so it's no worries okay right and then what is this do is well we will read these formats and then uh, we're going to uh, the async facilitate us to export the data into these uh, so that is what we're going to use right okay so that's the good part and also uh, these are animated models so you can animate these models so there are more more details uh, the asset can uh, extract from here so some of them uh, will be uh, obviously animation right so animation data how fast it goes and all that uh, information and you can do the camera uh, the camera details the material so what is material we'll talk about that in a minute so the material data uh, and uh, the light lighting light setups how many lights you have in there uh, so 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 forth like that right so uh, camera material light animation uh, yeah basically these common ones right so uh, we already know this is a GL lookup right so the GL lookup uh, your GL look at uh, uh, will take care of this look at right and then the material is if you're looking at the light model light model has a specular diffuse and all that uh, in uh, one uh, the, the three arrays and then again you will you might see in the light model we have material lighting material specular material diffuse and so on so that is for the other part right so uh, when you apply these two values you can apply there and uh, so you know already the cam is to look at so you know all these ones uh, the texture names of the texture um, so the images obviously you know that's how to load that using soil so only thing uh, we don't know is this other than that you know what are the vertices normals texture color faces and the cam settings uh, if you really want to use this you can so you already writing code using these uh, variables but you never use it so but <clears throat> when you're using a model you can obviously address any of these ones uh, so you can create the whole scene using that okay so the whole scene means lighting and material and all that with the animation okay so this is the overview uh, and uh, this is the library we're going to use for the 3d model loading and uh, it doesn't mean that it will load everything for you you have to actually ask the asymptote to use whatever you're using so this is where the buffer comes into play right and uh, how these things handled by the buffer and uh, th i just gave you a general overview so far up to now uh, i called everything vbo but it's not the case vbo has several uh, components in it uh, the pieces in it and we call those uh, separate names and then what are those that's what what is the architecture of that and what are those that's what we're going to look at okay right so this is the general uh, introduction uh, of uh, what we're going to learn from now on
okay this the the section here uh, we're going to talk about is uh, vertex buffer object so so far i said vertex buffer object the vbo is everything but it is not the case actually the vbo handles only the vertex okay and it doesn't have phases the indices and or anything like that so it's just a basic vertex handling is what we call vbo so what this VBO is doing is actually you loading the vertex data into the, the, the high speed memory of the GPU. So this is what it does actually, right? And uh, the vertex data handling by the shader code or the in, the in the GPU side, which is we call vertex shader attribute. So this is what that is. And you can structure your own pattern. Well, when you're talking about the patterns on uh, vertex uh, here in the VBO, we don't have much patterns. We will have patterns when it comes to uh, VO, uh, VAO, right? We'll talk about that in a minute. But uh, here it will be very raw data, right? If you're using a VBO, what I mean by this is, let's say, uh, let's say I have a cube like this or just a triangle right so if I have one triangle right uh, it's a three position of the triangle uh, my vertex data will be look like this so for this quad I will have x y z x y z and the x y z wait uh, let's say these are two values and this is another one right two two and two right so those are representing one position here one position here and then the one position here right so let's let's say zero zero one two right so those are the positions handling here and uh, well there's another one here right for example if i want to draw this uh, so the next set will be like something like uh, there's a zeroth and then x3 y3 and z3 and then the other one is x1 y1 z1 so this is what actually is drawing uh, one triangle at a time and you can see it is expanded version so that means this one right is uh, right here and this one is right here so only two of them are not uh, only two of them are n not common but the others are common but this is what the actual vbo is so you don't have a compact data set so this is a very open data set in this case you have uh, six values right you can do that by four actually right so this is what the vbo is vertex buffer object right so it is just having all the data openly loosely right so that's what it is right okay so uh so you know what is vbo now right and uh, so there are no faces or indices so we call those different names so that's what it means okay all right so uh, so what are those right let me let me address this first and then we'll move on to the next level right and uh, so we can look at the rest of it okay so so this is the structure of vbo all right and uh, so when you're looking at uh, these three points so this is nothing but a triangle right so you have three points in there one has x y z values the vertex two has so this is one vertex vertex two vertex three let's call it like that right and uh, you can see now how much how much data you need to store this right and each one is a floating point number so that means uh, this one right here is a four bytes it says so, so the four bytes means what how many bits is that right so you multiply this by eight so you get 32 bit right so this part is 32 bit and then this is 32 bit and 32 bit so that means uh, I have 96 bits uh, for uh, one vertex, one point. It's 90, 92, uh, uh, 96, right? Uh, three, three bytes in there, right? I mean, uh, not three bytes, 12 bytes, right? Yeah, uh, <coughs> 92 bits. So you need for one, one point, right? Right here somewhere. 
and then the second one also like that so and the third one so when you uh, when you when you drawing this actually um, uh, you have to have uh, this many uh, structures so this is only one triangle so if I want to draw another triangle like somewhere here if I want to draw something like that well unfortunately uh, if you are not using any other the buffers if you're using only the VBO structure uh, we go with the VBO only means you have to have another triangle like that so that means it will be uh, uh, three more like uh, three more points so this will be double size it is 36 plus another 36 that means okay uh, even these are sharing right but still you have to have uh, drawing it with another so the array size will be 32 uh, 72 bits in that case okay so it's like that so it will be uh, growing so big uh, if you have more much uh, more of these polygons or the triangles well this size will be expanded right so uh, it will be expanded by number of polygons multiplied by this much right okay number of polygons so that is how big it's going to be it's not going to share even it's sharing some vertices it's not going to be listed like that so this is what uh, the actual size of a VBO is going to be okay so uh, uh, this is the summary of this pattern right here and the idea so this is what very important to visualize this this visualizing this is very important uh, this is the most simplest way of loading a 3d model right so this is the most simple way so that means is everything is expand and it's repeated we don't care about that you just throw out everything uh, very uh, in loose manner and then you just drawing it okay so uh, the the position data stored in 32 bit or so the 4 byte floating point number so this one is right here to here is 32 bit right and you have uh, three of them which is 96 right each position uh, e each position is composed uh, three of those values of course x y z right so that is the x y and z we're talking about and then there are no space so there's no space between each other right so the offset is zero right there's no jumping from one to the other right so that's what uh, no space means offset is zero and the first value starting at the beginning of the buffer of course it will be start from the beginning right so when you uh, setting up obviously the bind buffer means this will be generate your bucket here and uh, the size of vertices will be what 72 right uh, 72 what uh, well if I'm using four of them like this yes but otherwise it's 36 right um, yeah depending on how many you have so, so if I have vertices like this uh, that is actually repeating uh, two times right so in that case it will be uh, 72 right and uh, yeah so that is one thing and uh, and also uh, you just you just get this data array and you call it vertices and you throw it in here directly so this is the size of it and this is where you throwing the data right and uh, what is the purpose of it is a static draw or whatever you want to do right and this format of this structure is we call uh, this array buffer so that's what the structure is so this is a, how the structure is designed and then you load everything into this okay so that's what you do here and then uh, attributes uh, you starting from zero and then you jump with the three uh, what type of uh, three it is going to be gl float three and there's a flag here settings uh, just go and uh, see the description of this for the flag um, cannot recall it uh, straight and uh, three uh, of uh, size of floating uh, only for this structure right here it is three right so because i have only 36 here so that's why the three times float if i have more bigger than this you obviously you have to apply that 
uh, and then uh, uh, here what it says is uh, you don't have offsets so I don't have offsets here right okay so there are no offsets so it will be uh, very tight compact right so this is the structure so what you learn so far is uh, if I really want to use a VBO I can have my data stored in there right three points and three points three points like that and then uh, even those are overlapping each other doesn't matter simply you just draw one triangle and another and another and so on and uh, so you can simply use this VBO and load it into the GPU right okay uh, to handle in the vertex shader code and then there's nothing nothing fancy about it. it's very most uh, the most simple way of drawing things using a memory buffers okay uh, this VBO uh, putting into the GPU you call something mapping right uh, you can call this uh, option GL map um, functions in order to store it in the GPU actually okay so they are something like that also we we will talk about that in the GB GPU programming actually what is this mapping and how we do the mapping right okay and uh, so uh, so moving on from here um, let's talk about uh, let's talk about VOA right so uh, so what is this uh, well uh, so far what we learn is uh, the VBO has only the vertex data only the vertex data and I can handle the vertex data the way I want right but that is not the case if I have the vertex data right I should have so this is the vertex data I should have normal corresponding values for these and also maybe the texture code for each point and then also maybe the color if I'm using a material or something like that so it's like that so you should have each one must have the other data as well right right okay so in that case if I apply like that uh, usual way of drawing this is you say GL begin right and then you will have GL uh, normals GL texture code GL vertex like that so you draw it like this right uh, if you're using a vertex array object or the VOA instead of you doing it like this you can have simply called draw arrays right so that is one thing you can do right. so that is one option uh, for this there's another one which is if I have more than one object let's say I have uh, one sphere one cube and so on I want to I want to I want to draw all of these things all these shapes right and then also you can have one group called uh, caps capsulate all this into one group and then draw everything in the system you can do that as well or you can have different formats different objects uh, different uh, of everything I want to address each and everything separately I can have one VAO for one model and then another VA for another model what is this means well this means uh, if you want to do animation obviously right for example uh if i have a cube like this right so in the next frame i want to open the cover of it and uh, so this is animation type right so i can put these thing three things uh in a 3d vaos and then address one at a time so it will display everything that you want in an animation and go back so that is the animation right so you can do that as well so in order to get this flexibility we introduce something called vertex array object right vertex array object so that is where you can set more attribute pointers a normal pointer and all that uh, and uh, access those right so you will have now instead of what you had before uh, well I'll talk about it in the next slide uh, so so the VOA is containing one or more vertex buffer object so you can have multiple buffers so that's what this type is talking about 
right and make it easy between uh, uh, the switch between the different vertex data attributes so you can jump into this or this whatever you want to do you can do that as well if you have that's why i said also if you have frames like this you can jump from this to this uh, so this will be animation right and uh, so that's what it does and these are the the parameters you should be using for so you need a pointer of course and then the attribute pointers will be uh, design uh, whatever your structure so here this is where the patterns comes in right you can have v n c pattern or we can have v v v n n n and then c c c pattern or so this is one pattern this is another pattern so you can use any kind of patterns uh, structures of data that if you want to use so this is where the vertex array objects uh, earlier we used this as a vbo now we are just looking at it a little bit uh, in detail so that's what the difference okay right so uh, right so let's uh, go further on that and then uh, look at uh, what is actual structure of this okay so this is what it is um, so you can see here uh, in this one uh, notice that still we don't have the indices okay so the indices are the faces we don't have yet we have very open uh, structure of my vertices right and uh, i store everything uh, either i can use my vertices structure like this and then i can use the corresponding normal structure here right so same number it has to be and uh, and the other things like for example the colors or whatever right or the texture codes right so you can use like that so in this case as well it will be repeat so let's say this vertex is repeating again here in that case you have to have the same normal corresponding values so in that case well it is not that good right because we didn't use the indices yet or the any structure of that so this will be a very expanded version of that so now uh, whatever the array you had before now it's a uh, three times or maybe it's a uh, it's bigger than what you had before okay so uh, by three or four times actually right because if I have colors it will be three it's close to four if I have uh, the texture coordinates as well right okay so uh, so this is the structure of it uh, these are two different uh, examples here you can see in this one the position and the color and again the position and the color and the, the position using in this structure right here and this is a one kind of a VOA uh, VAO that you can use and this is another one which is simply you just have your positions and put it in a one one whole thing right here right so this is a one type this is another type um, as same as you can have one frame here for your animation and the other one here uh, so anyway so you can have either patterns like this or you can have only the positions whatever you want to do it's better you put it on the VAO and then call it a draw array so this is what the draw array does right and if you set up your all the pointers it will go and pick up the values corresponding values from there so that is the structure we call a vertex array object so this is how you actually using that uh, the V V a o part and then again you define your vbos right uh, obviously if you're using uh, these kind of patterns uh, you have to use a sub data i did not use sub data here this example is only for the vertices but if you're using any other other than this uh, like the colors and everything you can use sub data in order to uh, load these things uh, we did that part already on the lab uh, I mean the, the the assignment so I'm not going to talk about that much okay uh, right so um, so that is that so that what you can do uh, how you want to handle this structure that you can look at this uh, so this one has the strides which means offset values right and this one doesn't have uh, jumping it's just uh, the compact values 
one next to the other right so here you have some coordinates pointers which is uh, handling this kind of structure right so this is where you putting everything uh, but still uh, we did not pack the data so the data is repeating itself you can see so that means this array is very large right it's a huge array this is the biggest it can be if you don't use EBO so we're going to handle uh, talk about EBO in the next one right so the EBO helps you to uh, compact this array uh, from this form and make it shorter than this right? so that's that's what the EBO is for and uh, so let's talk about EBO right okay so uh, uh, so let me move to EBO and talk about that right so this is element buffer object this is where actually uh, the thing that you did as faces comes in this is where the faces are introduced okay so the faces are introduced to element buffer object so if you have seen uh, act actually you may have seen that in the code uh, we're using uh, the indices array and then the rest of we call VBO and put it in one and both of them are handling separately right so here um, uh, the EVO uh, structure is uh, is the one which is make your array smaller right so because of this part right here right so you have the data structure and then uh, I'm just saying okay use the same vertices don't repeat it and then just use the indices to uh, make it expand right so in this case if you're using uh, normals and everything so each one of these should have its own normal value right uh, so in that why why that is important well uh, these indices are you can't have multiple indices right so you can have only one type of indices so in that case indices array is having uh, just once right so if you want to have a surface normals in that case well it will be a little difficult on this case because i'm applying here uh, the vertex normals so each point have the normal right but if you really want to use the the face normals obviously you can you can have it uh, write it like a gl begin here and uh, when you using uh, here you can say gl normal and then you can have that array of values and then you can draw the element part separately because the element pa element when you're drawing elements you can have the f you have the flexibility of accessing each and individual element right so uh, in this case you can draw this element separately but anyway these calls right here he has nothing to do with loading these things into the vbo obviously you can and handle this uh, in the general form of uh, gl normal gl uh, texture code and gl uh, the vertex pointers right so the only thing is you will call it element for the vertex part right so the rest obviously you can write like that i think i have written like that because i use the separate uh, structures on my calculations on my research obviously uh, but anyway uh, what i'm saying there is you have the flexibility to use it in this form as well as any other form okay right uh, so this one uh, helps you to manage your memory efficiently obviously so that's what uh, the this is for because i'm introducing uh, indices here and then you don't have to worry about uh, un uh, unpacking all the vertices you can have the very packed version of all the data here right and then uh, i can access those by the indices so that's where that's where the element buffer object comes in so the indices part is what we call element buffer object okay so that is how uh, that is what we use as faces and then uh, uh, you can load this part and then this part and ask the system to draw elements in that case it will take care of everything very nicely okay right so when you put all together uh, 
so you can see a structure look like uh, uh, like this right so this is the structure which is if you have everything all together right so here um, I have my VBOs right uh, the structured with uh, whatever I want to do right okay uh, in the in the case of if I'm using an EBO you don't have to have uh, this you don't have to repeat now right so if you don't have the EBO obviously you have to repeat one triangle from the other uh, so what I'm saying is if I don't have EBO uh, uh, so that means uh, you you draw this one and then you draw the other one that means you need six of them here right so six data data set but if you're using EBO I can cut this down to four right and if you have more triangles like that yeah you can see it is reducing the size so here if I have this one to be code nine uh, so if I have nine there right because the three triangles but I can draw all these three triangles with the five values so it will be storage wise it will go down right okay uh, these values are too high right so you can do that like that so that is why the EBO is there so the EBO, if you have EBO you can have only these values and store it in a VBO uh, and then uh, again uh, I can set the attributes on the VAO like this and then access those uh, with the indices values which is the index values using an EBO so that is the structure actually so I break it into pieces now right so what I had before is something uh, very loose now uh, have very compact ones right so EBO when you're creating it you can see the indices you're putting in a one one structure of array so it's called elementary notice this one right here it's called elementary the previous ones we called just a GL array buffer this one is called GL element array okay so this is where uh, this is where you come up with uh, the index values okay and then when you're drawing if obviously you can draw it like this so you can use any other formats whatever you want to use uh, so that is a draw call right so now you have clear idea uh, what are the components in VBO actually okay so uh, right so uh, that's why I gave you exercise before this so you will have a if I just jump into this straight I don't think anybody will get it now you have a little bit more experience to absorb the data in detail right okay so uh, right so then uh, let's let's uh, see the code look like so this is what actually it's look like uh, you are basically the first thing you do is you draw the VAO right and then you having a, the whole big bucket in there and uh, you put the vertex data and if you have normals and all that you can obviously put uh, sub data here so the sub data part will comes down here and then it can have more values like for example uh, the first thing is you create a VAO right so the VAO is the bigger box as the capsulation and then uh, I will have my vertex buffer data right and here we can have uh, loading vertices and then i want to do the sub data which is the normals and the colors so it will be look like my vertex right v's and each corresponding v's might have my ends right each corresponding uh, v's also have t's right? so you can have it like that so whatever it is so in this structure while we do it you going to load it here right so that's the VBO part actually so I have all this data and then again uh, we will have something called indices right so the indices part is coming here which is going to handle your index right so that is what EBO right element buffer objects so that's what it's handling here you can see this one is array buffer objects and this is the element buffer objects so this one is index is always integers and this one is always float or the doubles or whatever you're going to use right so that's the difference and then uh, you set up the pointers obviously how you want to jump if it is in this example is only vertices 
packed together so that's why you have this structure uh, but if you have uh, the other pointers like a normal attribute pointer and then the texture pointer and all that you can set it up as well right and then how are you drawing it well all these package is putting into one vertex area object right so i put it in a one vertex area object in that case i just want to have i have to only bind that i don't have to bind anything else so i'm binding that here right and then i'm just saying draw elements so you can the other good part here is you can draw a portion of it so if i want to draw only one triangle so i can put here instead of six i can put in any other value and then see your the half of your project will be uh, drawing here okay so then you clear out your bar binding here so you can do that so in this case if i have more than one object uh, like for example again the animation kind of things i can put this whole thing into a where the vertex buffer uh, vertex array buffer and draw that and then i can have another vertex buffer so i can bind another one after this one which has uh, so we call it one here let's say and i'll have a, a, the, this animation and then i will have vo vao three or two i can have uh, like this so it's animation so it will jump from one to the other to the other that will generate a 3d animation that's how the 3d animations works the models works so um, yeah if you want to do this one you can use asimp and load each frame one to this one to this and one to this and then shift one from one to the other uh, with the timing so you can have pretty nice animations that's how we design animations so we'll see whether we can do that we, if we have enough time in this semester or I'm, I'm sure I will give you enough knowledge to do this. Uh, so we're look, looking forward to do that. Okay. Right. So those are the main uh, buffer structures. Uh, so that is belongs to VBO section or the part of that. And there are more buffers. Actually, I'm uh, looking forward to talk about those. Uh, I think uh, this already have uh, passing one hour already. Um, but let me address one more thing before I uh, close this one and uh, yeah I'm going to make it as uh, one hour and 15 less lecture so anyway uh, you can listen to it anytime you want break it to pieces so so the time doesn't matter anymore right so okay so so let me talk about VBO and then uh, uh, wrap this up and we'll talk about the frame buffer object and then the other simple buffers uh, next time like a depth and a stencil and all that okay right so uh, the the pixel buffer object is nothing but uh, what we do in the soil so this is the part which is actually the soil handling right what does it do is uh, if you have images for example if I have okay so we load images into the system right so this is the image the texture that we're going to load and put it in the pod right so what you have to do is you have to go and pick the format of this right it has a different pattern of pixels in there so I had to load these pixels into uh, my own memory right right so this is actually a packing right so I'm just putting things into my memory right so the buffer storing pixel data is called uh, pixel buffer object so it is nothing but pixels is going to store right uh, these are mostly used in image storage of course right uh, that is not only thing maybe the rasterization handling this one as well right the depth buffers and all that comes into play when the frame buffer comes in so one part of a frame buffer is a pbo right okay right as the advantage is yes i can use these buffers uh, faster so that means i can manipulate these colors which is the rgb values in the fragment shader so the fragment shader is handling actually the pbo part and you can have pretty nice colors and then nice uh, outlook effects using that so that's what the pbo is all about right so the graphic card uh, 
accessing these this this has to be really fast ones because the pixels are depending on the resolution and it has to have match with the refresh rate and all this comes into play uh, that's why you have uh, um, g-sync g-sync uh, latest uh, models of uh, graphic cards has g-sync which is your refresh rate of your monitor has to match uh, uh, whatever the refresh rate or the the frame rate that you're running on this uh, rendering right if it is 30 fps uh, or 28 fps or whatever if it is not matching the refresh rate you will have flickery images so it is, is flickering so that's why the g-sync comes into play in the latest hardware right but anyway uh, so the pixel buffer so what, what I'm talking about in here is when you're processing uh, RGB values, it is very important you uh, do that fast and then be ready in the synchronization between the refresh rate and the graphic card processing, right? So that's why the PBO is comes into play, right? So it has two uh, main uh, operations. One is uh, pixel packing and the other is unpacking, right? So when you're reading data from outside, so the images to the memory, we call it uh, GL read and the GL get images. These are two things uh, which is mostly handling by soil in our case. So that's why we did not touch that part, right? We never use these because we use the soil. The so soil actually, if you go and look at inside the soil, uh, you might using these functions in order to store data into the memory, okay? right so and then uh, the unpacking is when you're drawing the pixels right and uh, if you're using a sub images most of these are just uh, using a, a 2d texture code uh, to map things into the model so that's why that's where this comes in okay so all right so in the next lecture we'll be going to look at uh, frame buffers uh, frame buffer object and a little bit on the depth buffers and things like that so that will help you to have good knowledge of